Selj Castle in Selj, Slovenia Selj Castle is a castle ruin in Selj, Slovenia, formerly the seat of the Counts of Selj. It stands on three hills to the southeast of Selj, where the river Savangia meanders into the Lako Valley. Today, the castle is in the process of being restored. It was once the largest fortification on Slovenian territory. The earliest reference to Selj Castle dates from 1322 and calls it Perch Silly. Later, the castle was known by various names, including Vest Sili, Castrum Sili, Jlas Obersili. It is noteworthy that the name Obersili, Upper Selj, only appears after the Counts of Selj had died out. Its original name was Grad Selj, Selj Castle. The first fortified building on the site, a Romanesque palace, was built in the first half of the 13th century by the Counts of Hunberg from Carinthia on the stony outcrop on the western side of the ridge where the castle stands. It had five sides, or four plus the southern side, which was a natural defense. The first written records of the castle date back to between 1125 and 1137, it was probably built by Count Gunter. In the western section of the castle, there was a building with several floors. Remains of the walls of this palladium have survived. In the eastern section, there was an enclosed courtyard with large water reservoirs. The eastern wall, which protects the castle from its most exposed side, was around three meters thicker than the rest of the curtain wall. The wall was topped with a parapet and protected walkway. This was typical of ministerialist castles of the time. The first castle was probably burned and destroyed in the fighting between the Lords of Sunek and the Lords of Offenstein. The gateway was later moved from the northern side by freemen loyal to the Lords of Sunek. They gave the castle a new curtain wall and reinforced this with a tower on the northern side, which guarded the entrance to the inner ward, sometime before 1300. The new wall reached from a natural cliff in the east to the remains of the earlier wall in the northeast. The entrance was moved to the southern side, where it still is today. In 1333, the castle came into the possession of the Lords of Sunek, who from 1341 onward were the Counts of Selj. They set about transforming the fortress into a comfortable living quarter and their official residence. Around 1400, they added a four-story tower which was later called Friedrichhof Stolp, Frederick's Tower, from Bergfried, modern German Bergfried, the term for the central tower of a castle in the Middle Ages. On the eastern side of the courtyard, there was a tall, three-story residential tower, which is the best preserved section of the castle after Friedrichhof Stolp. The main residential building, a palladium, which also had rooms for women, stood however in the western section of the castle. This part of the castle ends at the narrow outer ward and is in a state of disrepair. On the southern side of the Palladium, there was a tower, known as Andrzejew Stolp, Andrew's Tower, after the chapel on the ground floor, which was dedicated to St. Andrew. In the Middle Ages, the castle walls were impenetrable, an attacker would have had to rely on starving the defenders into submission, but a hidden passageway led from the castle to a nearby granary. The Counts of Selj stopped living in the castle in this period, but they stationed a castellan with an armed entourage here. During an earthquake in 1348, part of the Romanesque palace and the rock on which it stood were destroyed. The ruined section was rebuilt and relocated towards the bailey. In the 15th century, the outer ward was extended on the eastern side of the ridge as far as the rocky outcrop. Here, the wall connected with a powerful, five-sided tower. In the second half of the 16th century, the castle was once again renovated. The walls in the inner and outer wards were made taller, and the bailey was renovated. The modern sections of the walls feature Renaissance-era balustraria. The first imperial caretaker, Kritov P.L. Unnad, was named in 1461. The second, Jurij P.L. Upfalterer, 
was named just two years later. The castle entered the care of André P.L. Hohenward in 1470. When he took it over, he swore to take good care of it and to keep it in a good condition. He carried out this service until his death in 1503. He was succeeded as castle caretaker by Jacob P.L. Landau, the government administrator in Upper and Lower Swabia. Landau obtained the position from Emperor Maximilian I, who was at the time still the King of the Romans, for having lent him 10,000 crowns. Landau was still castle caretaker in 1514. Two years later, Bernard Ronacre briefly held this position, but the emperor ordered him to hand authority to Gaper Herbst and to make do with the income generated by Rudolf Swert, later Novo Mesto. Other caretakers followed, most of whom were at the same time vice dominus and the administrator of various taxes. The castle's importance as a fortress rapidly gave way to its economic role. Selge Castle was not only the most important castle in Slovenia, but in the entire Eastern Alps. It covered an area of almost 5,500 meter superscript 2. From the ruins that remain and from depictions of the castle that have survived, it is possible to paint a detailed picture of how it once looked. Several new techniques were employed in the castle's architectural development, which were the model for other castles in the region under Selge's influence. The castle began to fall into disrepair shortly after losing its strategic importance. George Matthau's Vischer's depiction of the castle from 1681 shows that Friedrichhofstalp no longer had a roof at the end of the 17th century. During the renovation of the lower castle, the section closest to the town, in 1748, the castle's tiled roof was removed. When Count Geisruck bought the castle in 1755, he removed the roof truss as well. The best stones were then reused in the construction of the Novo Selge mansion between Petrov and Alec. From this time onward, it was no longer possible to live in the castle, and it slowly turned into a complete ruin. The last residents left the site in 1795. In 1803, the farmer André Gorik bought the castle and began to use the site as a quarry. In 1846, the governor of the Styria, Count Wickenburg, bought the ruins and donated them to the Styrian estates. In 1871, Interest in the ruins began to take hold and in 1882 the Selge Museum Society began efforts to restore the castle, which continue to this day. During the time of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, the authorities in Maribor left control over the ruins to the local municipality, which made great contributions to the castle's preservation. During World War II, the ruins were abandoned, but reconstruction efforts continued after the war. In the corners of the Friedrichhof Stolp, cement blocks were used to replace missing stones. A proper parking lot was also created in front of the entrance to the castle. On the northern side, the wall was knocked through to create a new side entrance to meet a new route that had been built there, Pelikanova Pot. The Selge Tourist Board holds an event entitled Pod Z Vestami Selgenov, Under the Stars of Selge at Selge Castle in late summer every year, which features performances and representations of life in the Middle Ages. Music concerts also take place in the castle. Selge Castle is visited by approximately 60,000 people every year. An annual cultural entertainment event, Veronikini Viri, which is named after the character Veronica in the Slovenian opera Veronica di Sinica, also takes place in the castle. The evening features various concerts, theatre performances and other entertainment, and each year the organiser, in collaboration with the municipality of Selge, awards the Veronikina Nagrada, prize, for poetry and the Zlatnik Posadi, gold medal for poetry. The Veronikini Viri event has been taking place since 1996 and the Veronikina Nagrada has equally been awarded since then. The Zlatnik Posadi has been awarded since 2004.
like us and join us at Extreme Collections for more fun and knowledge.